This is the Lock Picking Lawyer, and what I have for you today is a really interesting master lock product. This is a residential deadbolt with an integrated combination lock. This, of course, is not a new idea. However, master lock's implementation of it is unfortunately deeply flawed. I'm going to show you two different ways to get into this lock. The first will be to pick open the core that's right in the center of the deadbolt, and the second will be to bypass the locking mechanism altogether. And the presence of this second vulnerability is, in my opinion, an unforgivable sin. But before we do that, let me show you something about this lock that I do like. Master Lock has a feature that they call Night Watch. It's integrated into this thumb turn right here. And if we look at the bottom, you can see a silver button. When you pull that, push that silver button down, it allows you to pull the thumb turn out and expose that red collar. If we look at the back of the thumb turn, you can see what that does is lock the thumb turn in place. That in turn locks the tailpiece that fits into this slot, and that in turn locks the deadbolt. So when night watch is in place, you cannot open this lock either by manipulation, by use of the key, or by use of the combination. I think it's a really nice feature, and, and this lock is essentially pick-proof when it is engaged. However, when it's not engaged, there's more than a couple ways to get into this lock. So let's start by picking. I am going to use top of the keyway tension with a 50 thousandths pry bar and a standard hook in 25 thousandths. One is loose. Two, I gotta click there. Three's loose. Four is binding. Gotta click out of him. Five is binding, gotta click there. Back to the beginning, number one is binding. And we got the lock open. So as you can see, not terribly difficult. I felt one security pin, if you even wanna call it that, and that was probably a bump stop pin in slot two. And I know that's a bump stop pin because I had to lift the pin particularly high before I felt any sort of engagement. Okay, before I show you the bypass, let me actually show you how the combination works. If we wanna open this lock with a combination, you do is reset it by turning it right a couple times. And the combination for this is 83022. So we'll stop on the number eight then turn counterclockwise, pass 30 once, and stop on it the second time around. And then we'll turn clockwise again until we hear a loud click. And that will happen on the last digit, 22. Okay, that click just happened. I hope you could hear it. And right now, this dial is seized up. We can only continue to turn it by turning this tailpiece. So watch that tailpiece carefully as I turn the combination or the dial, that tailpiece turned 90 degrees and that opened up the deadbolt. Now the bypass I'm about to show you will take advantage of part of this combination mechanism. In the very back of the wheel pack, there is, I guess, another wheel that imparts the motion of the wheel pack to this tailpiece. What we're going to do is reach between the dial and the bezel, pick up that fourth wheel and manually turn it. Now, if you unlock the door by turning clockwise, what you need to do is insert your shim right about here at the eight o'clock position. And if you unlock it by turning counterclockwise, you insert the shim right around the four o'clock position. And I'm actually going to use two of these little shims right here just for a little bit of added strength. Right now this lock is set up, so we have to turn it from this direction. And there we go, I think I've got these in place. And it's actually a little bit tricky to turn these, frankly, because these little shims are pretty sharp. So what I'm going to do is use this little set of tongs grab onto the shims and use them to help me get a little bit of leverage. 
As I turn it, I'm going to turn this upside down so you can see what's going on. I want you to watch this tailpiece as I turn this or as I move these shims. As you can see, we just turned that tailpiece 90 degrees and that opened the deadbolt. So an absolutely inexcusable vulnerability in my opinion. So let me take this apart and I will show you how this mechanism works. Okay, the first thing of note that we wanna take a look at is this last wheel and you can see the back of it, it's silver in color. And attached to that wheel is this little piece right here. And what that does is impart the motion of that fourth wheel directly to the tailpiece. And that's what we take advantage of in our bypass. We reach between the dial and the bezel and actually pick up this roll pin right here, which is the combination lock fence. And when we turn that roll pin around, you can see it directly moves this tailpiece. And when it's set in the other position, I go in from the other side and move this fence. There we go. As you can see, not terribly difficult to do. Okay, let's continue with our disassembly. Take a few more pieces off of here. careful and put this down take this top piece off okay let me take each of these wheels off in turn and tell you what they do first we have this little wavy piece and that is a spring that keeps the whole wheel pack under tension and make sure nothing rattles around while you're dialing the combination then we have this fourth wheel which I described before. This imparts the motion from the wheel pack onto the tailpiece, and it also contains the two fences. And you'll note that these fences are spring-loaded into the wheel pack. Now, normally that is a big, big no-no, because if the fence is touching the wheel pack, that means you can hear where the gates are. And I think Master Lock has done something to mitigate that issue. So I suspect someone more skilled at manipulation than me could probably take advantage of it. Okay, next we have, let me get some tweezers so I can pull these pieces out. We have a little plastic bushing here. Then we have our first combination wheel. And if we look at the back here, let me give you a good view of this you'll see that there's a small T-pin and it's actually removable. It's a little stiff in there as it should be, but you can move it to any position around the dial and, and, move, and by moving that T-pin, you will reset the combination for this wheel. So this lock is actually fully resettable, though I can't find directions to do it anywhere. So I'm not sure it's something that Master Lock wants you doing. Okay, we have our next wheel. It looks exactly like the one I just showed you. Then another plastic bushing. And then the final wheel, the one that controls the last number of the combination is set into the dial and you can move it to different positions. And if we look carefully in there, you can see there is a mark on the inside of the bezel and that's set at number 22, which is the third digit. And you can change the third digit of the combination just by lifting this wheel up and setting it at a different position. Okay, now let's take this core apart. OK, 
Okay, we got that back cap off. Now let's just get the key and a follower and hopefully this will come apart. Okay, the first thing I see is the fact that this is a six pin core, but it only has five pins keyed up. That's always a disappointment. Okay, key pin number one is a double sided key pin, much like you would see in a quick set. Key pin number two is a very deep spool. I've actually seen in master lock uh, literature that these were being included in the, in the pinning kits now. I've not seen one before though. That's probably gonna make this a lot more rake resistant than most other locks that won't have that. Now let's take a look at these driver pins. I didn't feel anything special with the exception of that anti-bump pin in slot two. And yep, that's definitely a bump stop pin. And it looks like everything else is standard, as it felt like as we were, we were picking it. Okay, let me give you a close-up of all this pinning now. As you can see, all of the key pins are double-sided, and I usually don't like to see them because by making them double-sided, we put a tape right at the shear line that makes the lock just a little bit easier to pick. Then we have key pin number two, which I was surprised to see, a very deep spool, which probably makes this lock a lot more rake resistant. Then on the driver pins, we have four standard pins in slots one, three, four, and five, and then a master bump stop pin in slot two. So that's all I have for you on this master combination deadbolt. If you do have any questions or comments about it, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe. And as always, have a nice day. Thank you.